I mean, look at this. We predicted this perfectly, right? And hopefully you guys can see this, that we're nailing all these, right? Hey, Jen, hey Jay, I know you're on Waves Maxi, but I have a feeling Filecoin may change your mind. Thank me later. Yeah. We do a, we do a part of this uh, every night where we we just gaze upon the beauty of Filecoin and XCN and how they're just going to zero. But anyway, let's talk about Bitcoin real quick and the market. Hopefully you guys are seeing this, how we're nailing all these tops and bottoms, right? So, because I don't care if I, if I, you know, I've been doing this for a while. So hopefully you guys can start seeing this if you aren't already. So first, you know, we came up and we kind of had this rising wedge formation. We had this breakout, which, you know, we weren't really that convinced by it. We kind of said maybe it was just the NASDAQ pumping up. Because overall, we had this nice kind of consolidating pattern. And then this breakout, you know, didn't really make sense here. It was it just followed the NASDAQ. But anyway, we came back down and then we broke structure, right? We broke this trend line here. And we said, okay, where is going to be our key level? And if you watch the volume profile level, you can see exactly where. 16, 6, 16, 5, right here at this volume profile. POC right here. Right? Which now it's changed actually because we've come down. That's amazing. It's changed since we've come down more, huh? Amazing. Let me go back to how it was before. I can. There we go. So we said that this POC right at 16.5, right? We wick the bottom entry here into a long. A beautiful, beautiful, nice entry here. Wicked it. Came right back up. Easy profits. Then we said in the last video, since we kind of went sideways for a little bit, we said these are the two things we're going to do. These are the key levels, right? We want to be shorting here between like 16.8 something and 16.9 where you'd be making a lower high. And that might be the top of the rising wedge. And I mean, like, look at this, right? It came up. Touched very close to it. Now, you know how I draw these. Grizzly sees them when I draw them. I draw these things in like five seconds, right? I'm not over here, you know, lining up the stars and the moon and Pythagoras and all that stuff, right? I'm just quickly drawing this stuff because it's about the ideas. So, you know, I quickly drew these on here, probably like on the four hour, you know. We came back up and we did, we made a lower high, but I didn't see, you know, this is actually the lower high right here. So we made a lower high to this one. And not this one, but this one right here. But it's the same principle, right? We came up, made a lower high, which was near our short target. And we knew we were having this huge rising wedge to the downside eventually. We kind of reached the top of it up here. So then what's going to happen next? Well, just like we said yesterday, come up, make a lower high relative to the previous high up here. Come down, first make a higher low you know we've been saying that you got to make a higher low before you make a lower low so this line is the line to focus on right now okay this one i'm gonna make i don't know purple let's do purple the purple line is the one you need to be focusing on so we come down we make a Higher low first, and actually it's going to be much lower than this, but I don't want to redraw this line because I feel like I'm cheating then. You know, because it's just, ugh, I don't like that. I don't like, I don't like redrawing the line. So, I'll, I'll draw a new line then. Oh, it feels so scummy. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't like doing that. I like being honest and accountable. Alright, so we come up, we made this rising wedge. We're going to come down somewhere over here and make a barely higher low. And then see some upside and then do it all over again, right? That's essentially what we said yesterday. We said we're going to come down, make a higher low, come back up, do it all over again, and then drop down. Because the more times you visit a support, the more likely it is to break as you fill all the orders there to the downside. Then we drew this line. Once we broke down, we said whenever you come down, you're going to retest the trend line, right? So we came back we came back up and we did retest the trend line. We actually retested the uh, top trend line uh, with a break to the downside. So going back, like, I don't know when this was back in like 
mid to late November, we were saying this was a rising wedge, right? We had this kind of drawn when we were up here. We were looking at this being a rising wedge. No one could tell you where it's going to be going next and when. Well, people can say, you know, where, but no one's going to say like, you know, hey, it's going to be 100K by this day, right? And don't trust them. Don't listen to those people. They're crazy. But we have an idea about where it would possibly stop. You know, the, the key areas, right? And so if you enter those key areas, you know, this this high right here, this 18.3 was a little bit off. You know, this was really tough to kind of get. I mean, looking back at it on hindsight, you do kind of see if this was the, the high of the range right here at November 9th at 18.4 then maybe this was, you know, where it was going to make a lower high. I mean, you know, I didn't have the foresight to say that, you know, um, but, it, you know, I do sound like a broken record when I keep saying, oh, we're going to make a lower high, you know, and then, and then, you know, come down, make a higher low and then a lower low, right? Hopefully you guys can hear my crappy voice every time I can hear it in your head, you know, saying that. <laughs> but yeah, if you really break trading down to be very simple, it is very simple, okay? You don't need all these complex, you know, algorithms and, you know, to be looking for single prints and TPO and all this stuff, right? I've traded like that for a long time. And like my mentor started me after a while of just learning basic supports and resistances. They moved me to that stuff. And I learned that stuff, you know, trading on Excel charts primarily, but, um, you know, trading to like the, with the masses, that stuff is not really applicable and it just becomes too much data and um it can really drown you out from the nailing the most important thing which is entering at lows and entering at highs for shorts but that extra data once you become more advanced that extra data does help you pinpoint which support and which resistance though a little bit and it's just kind of fun sometimes if you're into that kind of stuff all right so what do we see next well we're going to see a higher low somewhere down here. So let me turn on my uh, um, support and resistance machine here. So look at the accuracy of this, right? Look at this. We had a nice touch here at this daily pivot, 1663, after we broke this support right here. I'll make these solid lines for everyone playing from home. He's a little bit brighter. Turn down the filter so we can see just a little bit less. Turn on just a little bit more. I'll do 4% for Bitcoin. Okay. So what we have here, actually I'll turn down one more. So we've gone kind of sideways here. The 2%. So what we have here is um, today's daily pivots here. When we broke this support right here, this was key. This support right here at 16.6 was key because then we had a swing failure pattern right here and that's a break in structure, right? Then we broke that. So then we're coming down to the next support, 16.63. So either if you're not in a trade right now, I would be waiting. Okay. Don't, don't rush anything yet. Don't rush anything yet. Wait, wait for good entries. Okay. The other thing you could do is you could wait for it to come back up and retest this resistance up here at 16.75. That's not a bad entry. It's really not. These lines, these lines are the support and resistance lines um, that are based on, so they're in my indicator. No problem. Um, so they're on my indicator, which is in the description. Jay's dream suite. And these are pivots based on Fibonacci's numbers. And these are actually my like my custom ones that I've seen um, recognized as the most influential. You know, like the golden zone, 61866 is pretty key. That's actually fairly well respected more than like the three, the 382 is pretty well respected, but the 414 is not really. And some other ones. 282 is so-so, whatever it is. Um, so anyway, what I would be doing now is if you're not already in, that's cool. You're chilling, you know, you're chilling. You, if you're not already in, well, you always have an XC in short and a file coin short, right? <laughs> so you always have those two trades open. <laughs> okay. And a waves long. Remember, don't forget the waves long, right? 
Anyway. Um, wannabe, there's a video actually on my YouTube, um, how to use my indicator. That's also helpful. Um, it goes through each of the settings and everything that can be helpful, but it's pretty much the only indicator you're ever going to see me using beside the trading view built in ones. Cause it's really all you need are key levels, key entries. So if you're not already in a Bitcoin, sorry, I'll say for the fifth time, I keep getting sidetracked. There's that coffee I drank. If you're not already in cool, you're chilling, right? So right now, I would be looking more for a long down here where we would be making a higher low. So 16.5. Assuming we're not moving a million miles a second, I would be looking for longs at 16.5. Otherwise, I would be looking for shorts up here at like 16.82 would be pretty would be pretty good short. We still have 16.8. The most thing is the most important thing is just be patient, right? Don't rush in any shorts. Don't get FOMO, right? Because right now we're in the middle. We're in the middle of the channel. We're not at a top, we're not at a low. Okay. So just be patient and just wait. All right. Just just wait. You want to be right at a potential bottom right now. So you don't want to be caught shorting at a potential bottom or near a potential bottom. And you don't want to be long because we're not at the exact bottom, right? So just just be patient, you know. Um, but yeah, that's what I would be doing. I'd be looking for shorts up here at 16.8, uh, maybe 16.86 where we're making a lower high. You could also try shorting at 16.75, you know, which is the local resistance. I would do maybe lower leverage at that point, maybe just like, you know, 5x or 10x. Um, maybe 10x would be good. And then down here for longs, if you're really looking to just kind of day trade this, intraday this, uh, trade this level or this range right here, you could be looking for a local long at 16.5, knowing that it's probably not going to likely hold in the long term. You know, this is not going to be the bottom to 100k. But there's some money to be made on that if you, you know you wanted to catch the wick up, maybe make, make a nice 30 or 40 percent on that, assuming Bitcoin's not moving down a million miles a second. Otherwise, the key area is going to be down here at this value area low, 16.15, And that's going to be at the bottom of our range down here, which should be fairly strong considering we haven't been down to this range since November 28th, right? Since November 28th. Now looking at our volume over here, if anyone just watched the volume profiles video, you'll understand, you know, what's going on over here on the left side. Actually, let me make this a little bit bigger. So you guys, if you watched the volume profiles video, I thought this was interesting. Do you remember the different types of volume profiles, um, like the D type, B type, P type, all that stuff. Well, this would be like a B type, right? And these happen when you're in downtrends. This is when you'd be looking for shorts more up at the value area high up here, right? So directly. You can apply that knowledge right now, actually. <laughs> but anyway. So yeah, we haven't been down to this value area low since November 28th. So I would expect some decent volume in this area to be holding. And if you look at our our um, our volume profile over here, there is a decent amount of volume down here at the value area low. You know, expect a drop when we get down past this POC area. I, I mean, we wicked this thing pretty clean, though. There's probably not much left in this area. 16.5. Probably know which volume left there. So yeah, I would expect a higher low somewhere down here. In this 16.1, 16.2. I'd actually put orders a little bit above this. It looks like when we came down here, we actually bounced at the highest was 16.188. You know, there's no volume in this area, right? So this area is just going to drop right through. Oh, wow. That is, that is illuminating right there. <laughs> it's illuminating. You know, there's no volume in this area right here, so it should be a pretty fast drop through this area if we were to break this 16.36 right here. Alright, I think that's pretty good for overview of Bitcoin, what to expect. Now, looking at our... Why did this get moved over here? Hmm. There we go. So 
looking at our um, chart here to see what's going on under the hood. Let's see here. So looks like we did have some little J firing off earlier. Oh, that was actually two days ago. Wait, was it? Yeah, two days ago. So he fired off at the very bottom over here, but we haven't really had much since then. He's just been kind of chilling, right? So this one I need to... Okay, cool. Go to the hourly. Let's see what's happening. What's going on with this open interest thing? Oh, that was... Oh, life in and off the grid. Hey, welcome. Hello, Mr. Wizard. What's up, Matt? So, here, if we're looking out under the hood, we can see that the volume is just kind of... I mean, it's steadily increasing, right? But, I mean, we're going to be in an uptrend here. Yeah, I mean, we're making a higher low temporarily, right? So, I would not be looking for shorts right away. Be looking for shorts at those key levels we just talked about. Yeah, that's that's what I'd be doing. Why is this line way down here? What is this? Throwing everything off. There we go. I don't know what that was. Okay, this is this is the entire market. Okay, cool. Alright, so let's let's look back. Man, there's a lot of hate up here. There's a lot of bad juju up here. <laughs> Look at all that. There's no way this thing had a chance getting through all this. I mean, that's... That's rough. No one's getting through this. Anyway. So as we got to the top, you can see that the volume... I mean, we pumped up here quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, volume's just been steadily declining quite a bit, right? We did look at the on-chain metrics yesterday, though, and saw that mainly retail is kind of amassing and we can see if that's still the case here let's break this line up if we see that we break this into people under 100k yeah i mean look at retail retail is gobbling this up they're gobbling this shit up right here why this is such a flat line like nobody buying or something or what like why is this line so flat no happen i guess there's no orders on here that are of that value huh but yeah i mean look at retail here retail's hardly dipping in volume retail's loving every minute of this they're buying all this stuff up and they're probably losing money too right Damn, Zuhair. Sorry to hear that, man. Um, so usually, you know, if you have some bad trades or something, I would recommend just taking a step back and figuring out what went wrong. You know, take some time to to learn, you know, because the really like the best traders should be. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Congrats. Most people finish early, but you made it the full distance. That's awesome. If you're looking to learn how to trade crypto, check out one of these other videos.